Hello, my name is Brian Wilton. Some of y'all know me, some of y'all have seen the YouTube channel, some of y'all have read my books. Some of y'all have seen me on social media of some form or another. The um, interesting thing about that little hobby I have of writing a book is it just it keeps my mind active. It allows me to think about, it allows me to step back and take a look at some of this stuff from the outside, from a different perspective see kind of what's going on and I bring all that up to tell you this and last weekend I went to a uh, I went to a uh, winter nights or Sam Hain festival not winter nights a Sam Hain celebration with uh, with some friends of mine here in Tulsa Chase McDougal <coughs> and his whole team impact crew they're all fighters and all of them very good but uh, we were in the course of the discussion, we came across the idea, Chase presented it, that all roads lead to Rome. And that analogy of all roads lead to Rome is similar to us, all of us, walking one road, heading towards that one pathway of death, that one final doorway that we all got to pass through. <coughs> During the course of that walk through life, we accumulate a lot of junk. Some of it spiritual, some of it mental, some of it emotional, and a lot of it material goods. We accumulate that stuff as we walk along that road as if it were the important part of that journey. <coughs> People commit heinous crimes to validate their possession of that stuff. People will live vicariously through other folks who, who have the stuff and they don't. People will vilify the folks that have that stuff. And it's a big mess. It really is a, a, a very clear kind of idea to me anyway, and I'm going to elaborate on it. Now, don't be distracted to the left or to the right. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Um, all of those kind of simple sayings that you find in mythologies and religions all over the world. There's a path we're all going to walk. We're walking it right now. To kind of complicate matters, there's one, two, three million of us around the world <coughs> who have decided that we're going to dust off this old faith and uh, and try to use that to help us walk down this road. That way nobody can tell us what to do. That way we can kind of do it all on our own. And that's admirable in one way. In another way, it's a recipe for failure. Because far too often those people that make that radical decision to change the foundation of their spiritual belief may not necessarily always have the courage to handle the issues or the baggage that they're carrying down the road that caused them to need to change their spiritual foundation to begin with. And that's a problem. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Uh, some kind of little chest cold. The, if you ask anyone, where are you? It's one of the most leading questions that you can ask an individual. If I ask someone, where are you? They're going to answer in the manner that they were trained to answer. They're going to give you the answer that you think, that they think you are going to value the most. And based upon that answer, you can tell where that person's coming from in life. They can give you a geographic location, which is fine and dandy. <clears throat> they can give you, well, where are you? How's work going? They can tell you where they're at in their job. They can tell you where they're at emotionally. Um, they can tell you where they're at mentally. They can tell you all kinds of things. And all of it is based on a criteria that someone else taught them was important. Where are you? Well, where are you at? Your physical location is here, but all of us know that our mind may wander wherever it will. 
So is your mind necessarily here? Or is it wandering over somewhere in a past memory or a future hope? Anywhere but right here and right now, huh? Where are you? It's really the hint of an idea that I'm working with with regards to helping people go somewhere. All of us believe that we're on a journey. All of us believe that we're on a path. <coughs> and when I heard Chase say all roads lead to Rome and his analogy about how we travel down that path, because that's essentially what we're talking about. How are you traveling that path of the dead? How are you trudging the road to happy destiny? Are you acting like uh, Otter in the Hindluyoth? For, you know, turning, making offerings and sacrifices to Freya, hoping she'll tell him instead of letting him learn it himself. She cuts a wolf loose on his butt because she will not tire her worthy steed. Or is there a continual guidance there? Is there some kind of nudge in the right direction? You know, we travel down these roads. And we hear our kids say, Daddy, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And you know, we're not going to get anywhere until we do finally make that cross over. So I had all of these thoughts kind of swimming around in my idea. Being a veteran, there was one group of soldiers that I always kind of wanted to try to do, and that was be a Pathfinder. <coughs> Pathfinder is a guy that jumps out of a helicopter, goes airborne, or, or hikes in, or however he needs to get there, he gets there. And he, he makes a big circle with some dead cord, blows the fire out of some trees, and makes a big hole in the forest where we can insert air assault troops, or make a drop, or whatever we need to do. They build an LZ, and they go in, and they usually go in in a pretty tough situation, and just literally blow the hell out of things. They're pathfinders. Go out there, they create their own they create their own clearing so they can get the resources that they need to move the fight forward. I think many of us that made that decision to change the foundation of our spiritual belief are kind of in that same situation. We've jumped in there, we've cleared the LZ, we've made a big clearing around us in the woods. <laughs> We still ain't got the supplies and the resources we need yet. I know there are several hundred people, uh, and that's a pro. There's, there's literally thousands of people that have read my books. There are members of the Austro Folk Assembly, of which I'm a part, that are finding that they're not necessarily in that isolated spot anymore. That there are still several hundred more, several hundred thousand more people who are still in that spot. They've jumped in, they've made a clearing for themselves, and now they're just waiting. For what? <coughs> See, because I don't think anyone has ever sat down and said, this is where we're going. No one has clarified the objective. No one has said, this path in life will get you to the doorway of death in this fashion as a happy individual, as a well-rounded individual, as a successful individual. These people have basically cleared out a hole in the forest and decided that they're comfortable enough sitting right there and that waiting we victory win. It's an option. But is it truly a good example of what this faith ought to be doing for all of us? Now, we've made this wild decision to jump and go against the grain of society. And I say the grain of society. The, the last numbers I saw were 711,000 registered pagans in the U.S. Census or something along those lines. It was in some Christian magazine. They were upset because there were more pagans than Presbyterians in the United States. <coughs> but we have little pockets of individuals all through this forest of life sitting in the trees. And they've got a new path. And they don't really know where they are. And if you ask them where they're going, there's only the vaguest notion of an idea. Kind of a fog-shrouded hint of a suggestion that 
they might get to be old people and happy somehow, somewhere. Um, not really sure about anything else. Hmm. See, for the most part, this has been built on the idea that there's a threat to our existence. In some respects, there are. But you can only go so far with a faith by capitalizing upon fear or the threat of an existence. You got to remember, most of these people consider themselves to be fairly isolated from these ideas, these concepts. They aren't really worried about it showing up on their doorstep. And the amount of energy it requires to convince them that it is going to show up on their doorstep will get you labeled as a racist, misogynist, homophobic, you know, SOB at anywhere in the world. So in 1972, Steve McNallan kind of kicked off Ossetru in the United States. And a lot of people don't like that, but that's, you know, it's just tough shit. But Harry Christian has also kicked off. 1972. And within four or five years, they had facilities all over the country. All over the country. So we're sitting here on our path, trudging this road to happy destiny. And we still have people who would suggest that the best way to promote this faith, to move it forward, would be to capitalize upon the fear the very real threat to what's going on, the various conspiracies that abound on social media, the righteous indignation that, that most people confuse for spiritual development uh, on any given subject, be it politics or, or uh, you know, discrimination or whatever conspiracy theory or hell, even flat earth. <coughs> That's not good enough. That's not going to move this forward. There are literally thousands of people every single day that reach out to this kind of faith, this idea, this freedom, in the hopes that it will help them become something more in life, in the hopes that it will help them negotiate the obstacles they've placed in their own path on this road to the doorway of death. That it will help them deal with the emotional pain, trauma, wounds, or whatever else may be happening in their life. They are not showing up here because everything is going hunky-dory in their life. People show up at the doors of any church because things are going wrong. Things ain't right. If you cannot take a wounded individual and rub salt in the wound in the form of a conspiracy theory, and expect them to blossom into something magnificent and become the kind of people that our ancestors were, heroes, kings, conquerors, explorers, and successful members of a tribe. It's time we begin to identify where this path is going to lead us. It's time we begin to identify We've got the LZ cleared out. Now it's time to bring in some supplies and move towards the objective. So I've come up with the Pathfinder idea last night. About 11.30 at night, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Pathfinder. The last book I wrote, Life and the Love of Life, the first couple of chapters detail how an idea or a concept like the runes might move through time disasters, comet strikes, um, floods, uh, wars, famines, pestilence, death, human migrations, the attitudes of men themselves, how it might move through time to give us as individuals a hint as to what they might be looking for for us to move forward and the way we have the capacity to move forward. Life and the Love of Life is an exceptional book with regards to that. Matter of fact, it's such an interesting thing about the runes moving forward through time, wars, disease, and the inability of men to keep moving that information forward to become better and stronger men. That we emulated that idea when we sent Voyager out into space with a golden record covered in ones and zeros in a digital language that might tell whoever's out there who and what we are. Hmm. 
Life and the Love of Life is one of those books that's going to speak to a lot of people. Hell, it already has. <laughs> a Drink from Memer's Well was, a, was an exceptional book, but Life and the Love of Life is something that goes a little bit beyond anything I've written so far. Very proud of it. And all of the all of the stuff that I identify and the things that I've written, easy things to point out, easy concepts to wrap your brain around. The only thing people were looking for, and also true, was how to put it into words. How do I wrap my my faith in in this also true way of life, uh, this group of individuals? How do I utilize that to help me become something more than I currently am. How do I help, how do I utilize this very powerful ancient information and mold it into something that will help me make full use of the gifts that I was given uh, at the beginning of time by Odin, Billy, and Vey, and again by Rig. See, because I don't think we're making the most of that. I see a lot of successful people in heathenry. I see a lot of happy people in heathenry. But you spend 30 minutes on social media and it's very hard to remember that fact. I see a lot of righteous indignation parading around as, as spiritual development. I see people waiting patiently for that resupply and that airdrop of resources that they are expecting. How many people stand in a sumble, stand in a bloat, or sit in a sumble, waiting for that expectant phenomenon of some kind of sign to let them know that they're on the right path? Nothing really may have changed in their life, but at least give me some kind of sign so I know that, that it's okay. How many people are waiting on that? Quiet? Reading? reading the same old kind of archaeological dissertations concerning what the nature of our ancestors' lives might really be like. What you have to remember is that for thousands of years, these stories, these tales, this lore, provided purpose, guidance, and direction for literally millions of people across Northern Europe. And the amazing thing about it is, is that I can look at it today, much like my ancestors did, and I can see a wisdom in it now that would help me deal with the world today and become as successful as I want to become. I can find my own way in that. The Pathfinder initiative that I'm working on now will simply be, this is simply the beginning of it. We're going to discuss a lot of things. We're going to discuss how best to travel down that road to the doorway of death. We're going to tr discuss how to do it in style. We're going to discuss how to do it with our heads held high. We're going to discuss how to do it by getting rid of all of those negative trains of thought that continually poison the well of your own well-being. Most of it on automatic and we have no idea we were even taught to think that way. And yet we do it every day, waiting on the other shoe to drop. But it's time to stop that. We have at our disposal at our fingertips, literally a part of ourselves, a faith and way of life that time and time again, at every tale you see, you see an individual, a deity, a being rising above, rising to, rising to the challenge and not succumbing to the idea of being a victim at any level but rising to the challenge to become exactly what they were supposed to become, the gods and the rulers of Asgard. That's another thing I address in life and lore for the life. And it'll probably make some people angry, but hopefully they'll grow from it. That's got to be the point of all of this, isn't it? Not necessarily be right. Until we might stand up again like men and walk forward know where we are, what we are, who we are, and have a clear idea of where we're going. Once you have a clear idea of where you're going in this most powerful tool in the universe, 
The only thing that can stop you from achieving that is you.